Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Please be seated. Our ceremony will begin shortly. As a reminder, we ask that you please take this time to silence all electronic devices. For today's ceremony, please render appropriate courtesies for an indoor ceremony. Thank you. Welcome to the Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth Change of Command Ceremony. Today we honor Lieutenant General Michael D. Lundy and Lieutenant General James E. Rainey as they exchange leadership responsibility for the Combined Arms Center and Fort Leavenworth. We also want to take the opportunity to farewell the Lundy family and welcome the Rainey family to Leavenworth community. Founded on 8 May 1827, Fort Leavenworth is the oldest active Army post west of Washington, D.C. This year marks its 192nd year of continuous service. In its early days, Fort Leavenworth was involved in frontier exploration and physical defense for the nation and its citizens. Today, it is at the forefront of military leadership, education, and training. The United States Army Combined Arms Center, CAC, is the force modernization proponent for unified land operations, combined arms operations at echelons above brigade, division, corps, and theater army, mission command, airspace control, information operations, irregular warfare, knowledge management, personal recovery, OPSEC, military deception, security force assistance, UAP interoperability, and the Army profession. CAC is also the U.S. Army's lead organization for lessons learned, doctrine, training, education, functional training, fielded force integration, organizational design, managing the Army Leader Development Program, Army Profession Program, Army Training Support System Enterprise, Army Training and Education Management Enterprise, and the Combat Training Center Program. CAC is made up of more than 34,000 soldiers and Army Civilian Corps employees stationed throughout the United States, Europe, Korea, and Southwest Asia, and nine centers of excellence, 20 branch schools, and seven non-branch schools. The Combined Arms Center synchronizes 37 U.S. Army schools through Army University, educating and training more than 300,000 students annually, including nearly 5,000 students from 130 separate nations, and more than 10,000 sailors, airmen, and Marines from the Joint Force. Although much has changed over the three centuries during which Fort Leavenworth has served the nation, one thing remains the same. The Combined Arms Center and Fort Leavenworth remain at the forefront in training, education, and modernizing the force for continued success in complex and uncertain future environments. Today we are honored to have in attendance several distinguished guests. On behalf of General Funk and the Combined Arms Center leadership, we would like to thank them for their participation today and their ongoing contributions to our Army and the Leavenworth community. With us today are Mrs. Michael Lundy, spouse of the outgoing Commanding General, Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. Mrs. James Rainey, spouse of the incoming Commanding General, Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. Ms. Bailey Rainey, daughter of the incoming Commanding General, Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. Master Gunnery Sergeant Michael Shrout, United States Marine Corps retired, brother of Mrs. Rainey, and Dr. Maria Clark. Mr. Ray Shrout, brother of Mrs. Rainey, and Ms. Lee Nunn. Ms. Eric Dosty, spouse of the Command Sergeant Major, Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. The Honorable Myron Griswold, Mayor, Leavenworth, Kansas. 
Lieutenant General Robert Arter, United States Army retired, former Deputy Commanding General, Command and General Staff College. Lieutenant General Perry Wiggins, U.S. Army retired, Executive Director, Governor's Military Council. Lieutenant General David Hogue, United States Army retired, former United States Military Representative to NATO Military Committee, and Mrs. Hogue. Lieutenant General Badnarik, U.S. Army retired, former Chief Office of Security Cooperation, United States Central Command, Iraq. The Honorable Keith Pritchard, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for Missouri, West. The Honorable Patrick Warren, civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army for Greater Kansas City Area, and Mrs. Warren. General officers, senior executive service members, commanders, command sergeants majors, community leaders, academia representatives, friends and family of the outgoing and incoming commanding generals, Combined Arms Center, and Fort Leavenworth. The host for today's ceremony is the Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, General Paul E. Funk. Accompanying him in the official party are the Commanding General, United States Army Combined Arms Center, Lieutenant General Michael D. Lundy, the incoming Commanding General, Lieutenant General James E. Rainey, and the Combined Arms Center Command Sergeant Major Eric C. Dosty. Music for today's ceremony is being provided by the 35th Infantry Division, Kansas Army National Guard Band, under the direction of Staff Sergeant Andrea Slatke. The salute battery comes from the Combined Arms Center Special Troops Battalion, led by Staff Sergeant Brandon Black. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the playing of honors, our national anthem, and the invocation. General Funk has deferred honors in recognition of today's significant event. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars throw the perilous fight o'er the we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Delivering today's invocation is Chaplain Colonel David Wake. Please pray with me. Almighty God, your word tells us there is a time for everything, a time to plant and a time to uproot. We meet here today at a turning point in the history of the Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth. 
We thank you for giving Lieutenant General Michael Lundy the discernment and determination to faithfully develop cutting edge doctrine, modernize the force, and train warriors who fight our nation's battles. Guide both General Lundy and Paula as they transition from their service to the country into retirement. Prepare for them a great adventure wherever it leads. We pray you anoint Lieutenant General James Rainey for the task which lies ahead. Bless both General Rainey and Tracy with the wisdom and compassion to continue the legacy of leading change in the Army. May he train the force like Joshua, the great commander of the Old Testament, to be strong and courageous as he leads from the front. Be near every soldier who stands in harm's way and give peace to their families at home. And I pray in the clamor of movement and maneuver, we will listen for your still small voice. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On behalf of the soldiers and families of the Fort Leavenworth community, Sergeant Court Rial, the Fort Leavenworth NCO of the Year, is presenting a bouquet of flowers to Mrs. Lundy as a token of appreciation for her contributions while here at Fort Leavenworth. Likewise, Corporal Jacobo, the Fort Leavenworth Soldier of the Year, is now presenting Mr. Mrs. Rainey with a bouquet of flowers as a symbol of friendship and to welcome them to our Fort Leavenworth family. Today's change of command ceremony is a traditional military event that runs deep in symbolism and heritage. Central to the change of command is the passing of the unit's colors. This ceremony has existed in the United States Army since the days of George Washington, spanning more than 244 years of military tradition. The command sergeant major is the keeper of the unit colors. As the senior enlisted soldier in the unit, he is the representative for the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers, along with being the principal advisor to the commander. Command Sergeant Major Dosty passes the colors to the outgoing commander, signifying his last act of allegiance to that commander. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority and are representative of his responsibilities to the organization, its personnel, and equipment. Lieutenant General Lundy passes the colors to General Funk for the last time to signify his relinquishment of that responsibility. As General Funk passes the colors to Lieutenant General Rainey, so transfers the authority and responsibility for the unit from one commander to another. This is traditionally done in front of the unit so that all can witness their new leader assuming command of the organization. Lieutenant General Rainey now returns the colors to Command Sergeant Major Dosty for safekeeping. The undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, effective 16 December 2019, signed James E. Rainey, Lieutenant General, United States Army, commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, General Paul E. Funk. Hey, John. Hey, what a great day, huh? It's a great day. Our Army can do anything at any time. Even the snow can't stop us. So distinguished guests, fellow general officers, command sergeants major, community leaders, family and friends, thank you for being here today as we honor an Army institution, Lieutenant General Mike Lundy and his wife, Paula. And welcome Lieutenant General Jim Rainey, his wife Tracy, and daughter Bailey to Fort Leavenworth. And I think we have one on FaceTime somewhere too, right? Awesome. Good. I'm glad she's there. Uh, let's give them all a big round of applause. I'd also like to thank the team that put this, uh, the, this ceremony together. These things don't happen by accident. And those guys out there on the guns right now are probably pretty excited for us to get this over with. So let's give them a big round of applause, too. So my name is Funk, and I am an American soldier. And I'm thrilled to be here with you today. Our nation and our Army owes a great debt to Mike Lundy. He is one of the most selfless, professional, and intelligent warriors I know. 
the Combined Arms Center is the epicenter for change in our Army. And for the last three and a half years, Mike has led the 30,000 strong organization that is, is reoriented the Army from counterinsurgency focus back to large scale ground combat operations. His efforts will continue to shape the Army for years to come. Nowhere else is this more evident than in Mike's efforts to identify the 17 critical capacity and capability gaps facing our Army. This work quickly became the foundation for all readiness and modernization discussions linking efforts across TRADOC, Forces Command, Army Futures Command, Army Materiel Command, the Army staff, and our Army senior leaders. Covering multiple warfighting functions, the large-scale combat operations gap study has gone on to shape decisions on budget, material solutions, and Army organizations as we seek to build a multi-domain operations capable force by 2028. From doctrine to leader development, training to education, rest assured that you, Mike, have left your jersey in a better place. Who would have known that the same officer who Walt Pyatt, another Lieutenant General, claims, wore tennis shoes all the way through Ranger School and needed to be rescued during the swim test, <laughs> would go on to such great things for his Army. You see, Walt and Mike have had this running public joke. Oh, yeah, I figured you would. Uh, Mike, uh, so Walt and Mike have had a run running public joke over who carried who through what swim test and what ranger school and who wore the tennis shoes uh, and who completed the ranger school on profile. So I'm sure Mike will have something to say by this, but Walt got first dibs. This has gone back and forth for years. It changes the commands and other official engagements. The opinion of a peer, however, tends to be the most unvarnished. So I wanted to share with you what Walt shared with me. The reality is, Mike is as tough as they come. From cadet to lieutenant general, Mike Lundy has led through the most difficult times. Our Army and our nation are better because of Mike Lundy. In a way, Mike's version is true. He has carried me through the Army, unquote. Mike few opportunities compared to that of commanding soldiers. America's sons and daughters, know that you have contrib your contributions have made our Army a better organization and our future accomplishments will continue to make the Army and the lives of our soldiers better every day. Those occasions such as this remind me of my favorite poetry verse from Rudyard Kipling. Though I've belted you and flayed you by the living God that made you, you're a better man than I am, younger then. I think we should all realize that Mike Lundy has been our driving force. He's been our Gunga Din for many years. Mike, thank you for your hard work to make the Army a more lethal and ready force. But more importantly, thank you to your wife, Paula. Because you enlist the soldier, but you re-enlist the family. While Mike is the one in the spotlight today, Paula, you have given him the support he needs to keep serving the great nation all these many years. Please give Paula another round of applause. <laughs> Paula, your personal efforts demonstrate how the Army is truly a family and how through collective efforts we can improve the quality for our Army families and families in the surrounding communities. Thank you. Now, to the new guy, Lieutenant General Jim Rainey. Your reputation, as always, precedes you. In fact, Jim and I have chewed the same dirt and fought in the same fights for some time now. As which Winston Churchill once said, the price of greatness is responsibility. Jim, your reward is increased responsibility. It is with great excitement that Beth and I welcome you and Tracy back to Fort Leavenworth. Tracy, thank you for stepping up and continuing your dedication to serving our soldiers, families, and communities. Please give Tracy a round of applause too. So Jim, welcome to the epicenter of change in our Army. 
leading change is difficult. When difficult times come, remember the words of the great Theodore Roosevelt, is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. I have no doubt you will lead this team and un to unparalleled successes while continuing to enhance the lives of our soldiers and their family members here at Fort Leavenworth. As I said when I started, my name is Funk and I'm an American soldier. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commanding general of the Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth, Lieutenant General Michael D. Lundy. Well, sir, thanks for, uh, thanks for the very kind words besides, well, at least the front half of Pyatt's words were, uh, but the second half mean a tremendous amount to me. Uh, and I really appreciate all of you being here today and all of our special guests. I do want to call out General Ardner. Sir, thanks for being here today. Of, of all the leaders that I know, you truly exemplify what it means to be a soldier for life, and you've done more for Fort Leavenworth and the Commander General Staff College than any other person. So Paul and I... Paul and I especially appreciate your mentorship and your friendship, and you and Mrs. Arter are dear friends of ours, and uh, we will cherish that forever. So thank you for your exemplary leadership. And to my beautiful bride, because like I said at a short award ceremony before this, which was a bit of a surprise, um, I'm not going to goof this up this time. I'm going to start out first with you. Oh, you know, I, I can learn. I'm, I've got, you know, some level of intellectual curiosity. But... Uh, You've been with me for 32 and a half years on this journey, and I couldn't have done it without you. So I love you, and thanks for everything you've done for this great community here and everything you've done for me. So thank you. And when I got here, this tremendous team, we gave you a challenge to be able to change the Army. Uh, to be able to change the culture of the Army from one that was focused for 15 to 16 years on counterinsurgency to one that could prevail against the threats that we face around the globe today. And you met that challenge head on and you delivered. And as you looked across what we needed to do to change this Army, to drive change, as the intellectual center of the Army, uh, it's been absolutely amazing to watch all of you in action. I've been humbled, I've been awed. You've made me, you forced me to be better every day, and I've learned so much from all of you. And when I ask you to dominate your space, to dominate your space as force modernization proponents, you absolutely did. And if you look at doctrine, over 10,000 pages of doctrine over the last couple of years, it really changed the entire intellectual, the professional body of our knowledge right now. You delivered. You delivered documentaries and other ways that we could get that doctrine down into our soldiers because we've become an army that was very focused and pretty rote in what we were doing. And the kind of fight that we've got to be able to face in the future is one that requires thinking and being able to adapt and to be agile. And you've done that. You're really driving that intellectual body of knowledge. You've redesigned the army in total. Every one of the COEs down here looking in their force modernization proponency, their branches, their war fighting functions, their organizations they're responsible for have driven significant change, more change than our Army's seen since the late 80s. And that change is going to continue to go, and you're going to lead and drive that. And it's been absolutely remarkable to watch you, to be able to figure out very, very tough problems, to be able to take complexity and make it simple. It's been absolutely amazing over 80 force design updates, 
reorganize how we build capability and capacity in our Army to be able to meet the challenges. And you've been ahead. You were ahead in the national defense strategy by several years. It's been quite remarkable to watch. And in training, to be able to adapt all the combat training centers, to refocus them from mission rehearsal exercises focused on Iraq and Afghanistan, to one where we focus against a peer threat in a multi-domain environment. You've driven that change through the Mission Command Training Program and at the DIRT CTCs. You've modernized the CTCs, put capabilities there that never existed before. And you've driven what we need to be able to do to train the units and our leaders and develop those leaders in the most difficult environment that we can possibly expose them to short of combat. You've done all of that. And your functional training and your leader development, professional military education, this school here completely revitalized, completely redid the entire curriculum on how we train all of our majors. And down at the Captain's Career Courses in Bolick, you did the same thing at each one of the centers. And you did this with very little guidance, very little direct leadership. You just executed. You executed on intent. And it's been amazing to watch. And I could go on and on, but we don't have all day. And I just want to tell you that it's been a true privilege and a great honor to watch all of you do what's right for our Army, do what's right for our soldiers, do what our soldiers' parents expect us to do to be able to maintain that trust with the strength of our nation and the American people. And you've all done that. And I've been absolutely amazed. You've made me better every day. You've challenged me to be better every day. And when I came up short, you carried the day anyway. And you made our Army better, and you'll continue to do that. It's been a real honor to serve with you all. Continue to dominate your space, and I'll be able to go home and sit on the porch or maybe in a golf course, <laughs> knowing their Army is in your great and capable hands. And so I'll leave this organization in much better hands today than Jim and Tracy Rain. They are absolutely the right team to continue to change our Army. And there's nobody I'd rather turn it over to, my good friend, the guy that I trust most in this world, and he will do a phenomenal job. So, Jim, wear your eye pro while you're sweeping up all the broken glass that I left. Oh, one safety tip before the end of the day. <laughs> this is the best job that you will have in the Army. Every day, it will challenge you. You will know that it's the hardest job, but it is absolutely the most rewarding. And the reason is because of the people that are in this organization. They're fully committed. They exemplify the Army profession. They have the character, commitment, and expertise of what we expect Army professionals to be. And again, it's been my true honor to serve with this great team. So dominate your space, prepare for war. Thank you. Oh. Staff Sergeant Black, Staff Sergeant Black, Salute Battery, NCOIC, presents Lieutenant General Lundy with a shell casing from today's salute firing. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commanding General of the Combined Arms Center in Fort Leavenworth, Lieutenant General James E. Rainey. General Funk, distinguished guests, friends and family, thank you all very much for fighting the weather and taking time to be here to honor Mike and Paula and an incredible run here. I'd just briefly like to say some thank yous. I'd like to start by thanking God. Everybody usually does that, but uh, my journey here is absolutely underpinned by the, the grace of God, and I wouldn't be here without that. Tracy, my wife, thank you for signing up for a little bit more time in the Army. You're my, we're at the doctrinal mecca of the Army, so you're my center of gravity where I, all my power <laughs> starts and sustains me. Bailey, was supposed to leave, the weather helped me out there, so she's stuck, so she's here, and, and Jamie, I hope the, hope the technology is working, but uh, I love you both, thank you very much. General Funk and the Army leadership who have the trust and confidence in me, I don't, I don't take that lightly, um, and, and uh, I appreciate very much this opportunity and, and won't let you down, or the Army down. Uh, all the soldiers and, and leaders who put time and blood and sweat and tears into me 
to put me on this stage all, all deserve thanks and there's way, way, way too many to mention by name. I'd like to thank Mike and Paula for a great transition and uh, everything that General Funk said about General Lundy's time here is, you know, CAC has never been more relevant than it is now and it's been led by some of the best people our Army's ever produced but no one's ever done, her, done it better than Mike. Um, but nobody even talked about, uh, Mike and I started our relationship on the battlefield and uh, n nothing ruins a good war story like an eyewitness so I, w I won't, I won't. <laughs> I won't tell mine, but uh, but but we've we've been in gunfights together. Yeah, yeah. it was a b better, simpler time. But uh, but you see a man's soul when you serve with him in combat, and uh, and Mike is the best and uh, warrior that I had the privilege commanding with way back in 2004, Christmas Day specifically. But uh, thank you for your service to the Army, not just, not just here. I, I fell in love with the Army at Eastern Kentucky University, rappelling down the football stadium, and some of those teammates are here running around Fort Bragg and Fort Benning as young lieutenant. But when I came here as a major, I fell back in love with the Army. And I fell in love with the profession and decided that, that I was going to do this as long as the Army would have me. And I came here again, and I learned how to be a general officer here with some great mentors who took time and energy with me. So the Fort Leavenworth is, is my dream job, and commanding CAC, and this is the, the place I want to be more than anything. And I will just tell you that it is an honor to be selected to command here. It's a privilege I, I, I do not take lightly. You will get everything I have every single day, and that is all I will ask out of all of you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Staff Sergeant Black, Staff Sergeant Black Salute Battery NCIC presents Lieutenant General Rainey with a shell casing from today's salute firing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join us for the singing of the Army song. The words can be found on the back of your program. We also request that you remain standing in place for the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite you to follow the direction of the ushers and move across the stage to farewell Lieutenant General and Mrs. Lundy, and then onto the receiving line in the atrium to welcome Lieutenant General and Mrs. Rainey by exiting the auditorium to your front left. We ask that guests not participating in the receiving line please exit the auditorium through the rear doors. Thank you all for your attendance at today's change of command ceremony.